Hey guys, what's up? My name is Bernard and welcome to the channel. So after one and a half years of living here in Sydney, I am finally doing a home tour to show you the very first place that we moved into. To give you some context, we are paying $650 per week for rent, so this is what you can expect if you get a place in Camperdown, which is quite a prime location in the inner west of Sydney. Before I show you the insides of our place, let me show you some external features. Our building has basic security where a key fob is required to access the estate at the lift. This was one of my criteria when selecting a place because I wanted a peace of mind for my camera equipment. One thing we really like about our building is that upon entering, you are greeted by plants and a water fountain in the atrium. You also get a nice view when walking along the corridor. There is something quite calming about coming home to this after a long day of work. That's pretty much it for the outside. Let's now take a look at what's inside. Let me first show you to my favorite area of our place, my workspace. Over here, we will have my desk, which is where I spend most of my day. Compared to a lot of desk setup these days on the internet, mine is pretty simple, but it works for me. I have a standing desk as well, but mine is the manual one from IKEA. If you're anything like me, who is lazy, it is pretty tedious to adjust the height so I have actually never used the feature before. I do think that it would be great as a YouTube desk dedicated for filming product shots, but unfortunately, I don't have the extra space for that. I also have my switch hooked up to the monitor so I can game during my breaks. Apart from adding this headphone hook, there is nothing special about my desk, but it functions well. Directly opposite my desk is my workshelf, this is my backdrop in the talking head videos that you see on my channel. The bottom two shelves are more practical and I store my camera gear in boxes based on categories. The top two are more for decoration and I place whatever camera gear I want to display for my videos. I will admit that most of the times, the items that you see displayed on the shelf now is packed away in my work bag and the items that are actually on the shelf would be random things that I was using. I also have a C-stand here that functions as a clothes rack for my caps and jacket that I wear daily. On the other side, I have my dry box for my camera and my lenses and a printer on top that I use for work. I do have other camera gear scattered all around the rest of the house, but these are the ones that I use very frequently. That's pretty much it for my dedicated workspace. Let's now show you the rest of the living room, which is also combined with our kitchen. The thing I like most about our living room is that it has a wooden flooring. Quite a few of the apartments in Sydney are carpeted, so this was a huge bonus for us. Looking at our kitchen, I personally feel that it is quite aesthetic. It comes with a built-in fridge, oven, microwave, and a dishwasher. I imagine that it would be a pain if there were any problems, but thankfully, nothing has happened ever since we moved here. Other than that, the rest of the kitchen is pretty normal, so there is not much to talk about. Moving on to the main sitting area, we have our sofa bed which we also got from IKEA. I think it was an absolutely brilliant idea to get this over a regular sofa. You probably would have noticed by now that we do not have a TV. That is simply because we do not want to spend the extra money and we watch the shows from our iPad most of the time. Also. The sofa and my work desk is strategically placed, so if you want to watch something on a bigger screen, we do it on a 32-inch monitor. Since we don't need the space for a TV, Paula bought a plant and a small cupboard to place across the sofa. We also have a fish tank that houses some shrimp that was given to us by a friend of a friend that was leaving the country. It is quite therapeutic to look at them every now and again, and they are super low maintenance. Connected to the living room is the balcony. The size and layout of the balcony is pretty awkward as there isn't much functional space. There is however enough space to store our excess stuff like my bike and our diving gear. There is also enough space to hang our laundry. It is just as well because our balcony is right by the main road and it gets pretty noisy around here. So I can't imagine us wanting to hang out in a balcony for extended periods of time. This is one of the reasons why we want to move. Speaking of which, we are moving to this building right across the road in a few weeks time. Let me now show you to our bedroom. This is a one bedroom apartment, so it is just this one room, 
but it is an oversized one, so we have quite a bit of space. I would prefer having a smaller room and having a separate space for storage, but it is what it is. So this is the built-in cupboard that comes along with the place and it belongs to Paula. So as you can see, most of the items inside belong to Paula, but we also put in some of our shared items like our luggage and the golf clubs. So one of the dumbest designs about this place is that they place the internet connection point in the cupboard. So that is where our router has to go. So when the cupboard doors are closed, the internet connection is really bad. As if the internet connection in Australia isn't bad enough. So this is my cupboard. It is significantly smaller than Paula's, but that is fine because I have less clothes than her. So inside the cupboard, there is of course my clothes, but there is also camera equipment inside. And on top of my cupboard, there is my camera bags. So I have so much camera equipment that I have to fit some of them under the bed. And even then, there is some excess, so it spills out to the room of the floor. Here, we have a clothes rack, and this is for our clothes that have been worn before, but not dirty enough for a wash, so we hang it here. So right outside the toilet, there is a small desk setup. This was already built in when we moved here. It is slightly too small for my setup, which is why Paula does her work here. Next up, let's check out the toilet. And this is one of the things that we like about this place. The toilet is really well designed and spacious and in good condition compared to the other ones that we have seen during our apartment hunting. Especially if they were in older estates, the condition of the toilet was usually quite poor. So in the shower area, we have the regular shower head, but we also have a rain shower. This place doesn't have a bathtub, but I'm totally fine with it. So for those of you that have known me for quite some time now, you would know that back in Singapore, I have a dog that is a Shiba Inu. So as we were not able to bring her over, uh, we bought this toilet cover to remind us of her. This right here is my favourite household purchase. So this is a portable bidet and in Australia, uh, it is very hard to find a toilet with a bidet. So with this one, uh, this is a game changing product. Last but not least, we have our laundry area, which is right behind Paula's desk. So inside, we store our dirty laundry, our washing machine, and our dryer. And when not in use, it is neatly tucked away. So that's pretty much it for the home tour of our first ever place in Sydney. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and don't forget to like and subscribe if you did. Also, stay tuned for the next home tour of the next place that we are moving into. Hopefully, I don't procrastinate too long for that one. That's pretty much it for today. It's a wrap!